Good evening, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jane Schodel. I'm the lead programmer for the Special Presentations Program. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the North American premiere screening of The Banshees of Inna Sharon, written and directed by Martin McDonough. We are pleased to welcome you to the Visa Screening Room at the Princess of Wales Theatre. Thank you to our longtime major sponsor, Visa Canada. I would like to thank our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, and Bulgari, for their continued support. Thank you to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net backslash vote. We would like to thank Searchlight Pictures for providing us with this film. Thank you very much. I am so pleased to welcome Martin McDonough back to TIFF, as his films have been such a great source of pleasure and enjoyment. These include Seven Psychopaths, and of course, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing's, Missouri, <laughs> which won the People's Choice Award at the festival in 2017. The same is very much the case in tonight's film, a pitch black comic fable of wounded friendship and the perils of petty grievance. Set in 1923 on a fictional island off the west coast of Ireland, the Banshees of Inna Sharon brims with conflicts, both intimate and vast, ranging from the sounds of civil war looming across the bay to the exposure of long-held family secrets within the village. The heady combination of Martin McDonough's deliciously mordant wit and his deep understanding of the human spirit, combined with the outstanding performances of actors at the very top of their game, well, it is a profoundly moving experience. We're very pleased to have an opportunity to speak with some of our guests after the screening, but please join me in welcoming a few of them now. Please welcome producer Graham Barbent. Actress Carrie Condon. And writer-director Martin McDonough. Thank you, guys. I just said I won that round of applause thing. Um, <laughs> I did, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. I love Toronto. Uh, it's kind of where things started going crazy good with us for uh, three billboards um, five years ago. And uh, I was sitting in, I can't remember which auditorium it was, but it was just palpable how much you, you guys seem to like it. Uh, so let's continue that tonight. <laughs> um, we've done our part. <laughs> uh, no, I really hope you like this one. It's different to that one. Um, and uh, it's, it's, if there are any In Bruges fans here, I hope you'll... <laughs> I, ho I hope you'll like this too. It's a little different, um, but hopefully in the same kind of vein. Um, thanks, and see you after, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Beautiful, yes? <laughs> so we're delighted to have a couple of moments to have a conversation with our guests about the film. So um, we were able to take a few questions from the audience. If you have a question, if you could put your hand up and wave it back and forth, it helps me see you against the light. Um, please keep your questions brief and speak as loudly as you can, although I will repeat them for the benefit of everyone else in the house. I think those are all the rules. All right, um, please, well, uh, please join me in welcoming back producer Graham Broadbent. <laughs> Carrie Condon. And Martin McDonough. Congratulations on a spectacular film. Thank you. Thank you. 
So do we have some questions here? I know um, there's one right there, please. Um, the question is, can you tell us a bit about how you got the cast together? Was the script there first, or did you think about the people you wanted to work with and then write? Um, it's, it's, well, it was written for Colin and Brendan, and for Kerry, and for Barry. Um, and luckily, they were all free that summer. Um, but um, yeah, the script, script was kind of written, and I sent it to, to, to the guys first, I guess. Um, and uh, But it was written pretty quickly, in about three or four weeks, I think. And... Uh, we, we kind of got it, this was about three years ago, I think, and we, we kind of got it rolling really quickly. But I'd wanted to work with them. I'd stayed friends with Colin and Brendan since uh, in Bruges days, but we always wanted to do something together again. Um, it never quite uh, came about um, because I was too lazy to do anything. Um, uh, but yeah, three years ago, we, we got the ball rolling and then got Graham involved. And um, yeah, then COVID arrived, so we had a little break. And um, then we sh were shot last summer. Yeah, this time last year we were shooting on the west, west coast of Ireland. On the west coast of Ireland, because it is stunningly beautifully photographed. Yeah, if ever you're going, Inishmore is where Porrick's house was, Aran <laughs> Islands, in the house. Um, and uh, Ackill Island, which is wh where the more mountainous places are, where the beach with uh, Brendan's house is, and the pub. We built, built the pub and built Porrick's house. Um, but there is a little house uh, that was Brendan's house, Brendan's house above, the, uh, above the beach, which is still there to this day. Beautiful. All right, over there. Yes. What was the inspiration behind the story? Um, just I, the starting point was just a, a sad breakup, you know, but, um, you know, a non-romantic non breakup. But to, to treat that as, as sadly or almost as, as possible to... to uh, but to show both sides of it, you know, the sadness of being dumped and, and the tricky position of needing to dump someone is like was the first, uh, if you know what I mean, it was the first inspiration. And then the artistic, then I, and mostly it was like I was on uh, Colin's side, on, on um, Colin Farrell's side, but then to, to try and think why uh, Brendan would thoughtfully, I think, have to do that was when all the artistic questions came into it. Um, this is a question I wanted to ask you, Carrie. Do you think Siobhan's leaving, her final decision to leave, is it truly that she just had enough of this madness between all of this testosterone? Or, <laughs> or is it that she's been just harboring all of this inside her for a very long time? I think she was thinking about it for a very long time because she had to apply for the job initially. But remember, we kind of said that she didn't think she was going to get the job. It was just kind of wishful thinking a little bit. But also that she's a big reader. So I imagine she sort of saw other lives in books and thought about romances and things beyond the island that sort of made her think that there was more to life. And so she probably wanted to go. I think it made her right. have the guts to do it because it was getting so dysfunctional. But I think she probably wanted to go, yeah. Understood, yep. Other questions? Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, just kind of a small question. The, um, the backdrop of the, of the war, the Civil War, it was not a central part of the movie, but it seemed to play a role in it. So I just want your thoughts of why you included that as part of it. Um, Sorry, the question is about the backdrop of the civil war happening across the sea, and um, what was around your decision to include that? Um, obviously, there are sort of metaphorical aspects and mirroring aspects of that, but uh, I, I kind of would la rather leave that to you guys to, to decide. Right then, moving on. <laughs> Boring answer, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, yes, there's someone there, please. Uh, um, the question is around the ending. Um, did you struggle with the ending? Was it, it in your mind? Is it definitive? 
Um, or did you leave it open in essence because they say, yes, I'll, I'll take care of your dog anytime? Um, I, I knew it couldn't be a happy ending. I knew they weren't going to be meeting down the pub. I think Jenny is a hard one to get over. <laughs> um, but, but, I did, did, but I didn't want it to be completely depressing. Uh, and I think in the last line, there's some, some degree of hope or, or something for the future, but not a lot. But that's the best I'm going to yeah. be able to give you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so having a hard time seeing here. Is there anything else from anyone? Yes, over there, please. I'm curious, animals ended up playing a large role in the relationship next to Jenny. You know, they went off and played with the dog. Was there a curious for Florida? The question is around the great use of animals within the film. They're um, loved and present very much in the film. Um, what are your thoughts around that? Um, well, obviously, Jenny was a central part of, of the plot and the story, but and, and the dog. But the others, obviously, they were sort of all written into being in the house at the end. But the more we work with the horse, the beautiful horse, the the more scenes we wanted to put her in. Weirdly, um, I think it was only the morning of the the, the death, the finding Jenny, um, that. Uh, I thought about putting the horse in it. I think the horse makes that scene. Her sadness at Jenny's death is kind of palpable, I think, in that, weirdly. And, and after that, and I think we filmed that quite early on, and then we sort of added, that was Minnie, was the name of the horse, uh, added Minnie to lots more scenes, the window and et cetera, et cetera. So, so uh, I kind of love that aspect that these animals, um, supposedly brute animals, are kind of almost more thoughtful and caring about the whole situation than, uh, than the, the human beings on the island. Mm -hmm. All right. Any, right there. Um, did you ever go back to it or what happened to the parents? Oh, yeah. uh, did you ever have a backstory about what happened to the parents? I did, but I can't tell you that either. I remember it. Did I remember it? Yeah, no, we should oh, keep something secret. I, no. I've been saying it all through all the interviews. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that fucked. <laughs> It's out of the bag now. Oh, jeez. Go on then. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so, the la can I say it? Well, they paid yes, to come. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so the lake scene at the end with Dominic, do you know when she's standing at that lake at the end? We said that the parents drowned in that lake and that one of them perhaps was kind of suicidal or that it was suicide. And that we didn't, you didn't know, did the other one try and rescue them? Or what, did they both commit suicide? But there was a darkness around the parents dying. It was, and it, there was kind of like whispers in the community that may, you know, that it was not sure how they died, basically. But it was a sad death. That's what you said, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, remember, I don't remember any of this. I think Kerry's making all that up. It sounds good to me. Okay, but, well, good. That's where we're going with, because that's what I went with. Okay. Oh, it, this is a crazy time to say we're out of time. <laughs> but I just want to congratulate you so much on this wonderful film. Thank Thanks. you for bringing it here Thank to be you. with Thanks us. Everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, all of us. Thank you. It's a great pleasure. Thank you.